Greetings, greetings, greetings as you join. Happy, happy, happy new year. Glory to God. I've never known him to fail. Oh, glory. Wonderful is his name. He remains the same. Rohanna Yvonne Hendrickson Maynard, welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy New Year to you as you join. He started me on my way. He put food on my table. Joy to my day. Paulette William, out of many, Smile Jamaica locked in. God bless you. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to you all as you join. Glory to God. Wonderful is his name. Who knows he woke you up this morning? Good evening, Mum. Love you too. <laughs> Who knows? His name is wonderful. Started me on my way. Oh, yes, he did. Greetings to you. Happy New Year. Beautiful saints of God. Wonderful, wonderful is his name. God bless you all as you join. Who knows? The Lord is so good. This is 2021. And you are only here because he has been so good. Who's got a praise this evening for the rest of my life? Who knows they're going to serve him? Yeah. For the rest of my life. Yeah. Glory to God for the rest of your life. Please share as you join. For the rest of my life, I'll serve him. Oh, yeah. For the rest of my life. Yeah, who's going to choose to serve him? We got a word tonight from the Lord. I'm excited. We've been praying, fasting seven days to restore and walking in greatness ministry. Here we are. He started me on my way. Who knows he's brought some joy to your day? Glory to God. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. We're going to get into the word. And there you have it. Wonderful is his name. Blessings and greetings to you all in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. He is our soon 
and coming king. Hallelujah. And beside him, there is what? There is no other. And we give God praise this evening. We don't know how many of you may join on tonight, but we believe that God is in the midst. Hallelujah. And his word will go forth this evening. I want to just greet you all once again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. This is 2021 and you are here. And for that, we give God all the praise and all of the glory. Do share as you join. You know, it was quite a year, wasn't it? 2020. But God is faithful. He has kept you. He has kept me. There are some awful things going on in the world at the moment. But God is still God. He is still faithful to perform his word. Hallelujah. Good evening to you, Ian Mansfield. He is faithful to perform his word because he said that his word would not return to him void. We have been praying and we have been fasting. We entered into on the 2nd of January through to today, we entered into a time of prayer, a time of fasting, as the Lord had laid on my heart for the ministry. It was important that we just didn't just rock up into the new well, year, but that we absolutely, um, by all means, started off the new year in a time of consecration, in a time of repentance, in a time of seeking God for what he would have us to do in this season, to prepare our hearts before the almighty God. And, you know, the Lord gave me um, the word very, very um, carefully for this year. The word for this year is, for our ministry, is 2021 is the year of recover to discover. There will be some things in this year that the Lord is going to recover for you. And in recovering, through recovering, there will be that which you come to discover. There are things that you will not discover until you have recovered from certain things. I want you to understand that. But God is faithful, hallelujah, faithful to his word, faithful to um, his promise and faithful to that which he set forth unto his people from generation to generation. He is God. And he says, I change of not. Hallelujah. He changes not. For those of us that have been on the prayer and the fasting this week, it's been a deep time of spending time with God, really setting our hearts in motion. Our umbrella scripture for um, this prayer and fasting that we've just completed is, and some of you, depending on where you are in the world, you may be still fasting, but our umbrella scripture was 1 Peter 5 and 10. I'm going to pray. And then we're going to get into the word, if that's OK. Please share for me as you join. Heavenly Father, we just come before you tonight. Lord, we come before you just as we are. We ask, Lord, that you will have your perfect way in this broadcast. I thank you for each and every life of each person that will come to join us. Those already on the broadcast and those that will join and those that will watch the replay. I thank you for what you're about to do in our lives. I thank you, Lord, that the very fact that we are here means that you kept us in 2020 and you've been keeping us again. We thank you, Lord, for life. And that through your son, Jesus Christ, we can have an abundant life through our faith because the Holy Spirit gives us all power to maintain that faith and to be steadfast, hallelujah, in spirit, and in mind, I ask, Lord, that you take full control this evening. I come against every force of darkness, every plot, every plot, scheme, device, every pit, every net that the enemy would lay for us tonight. We come against it in the name of Jesus. 
we obliterate and we destroy that which is not of you. Holy Spirit, have full control. Send your angels to take charge over this broadcast tonight. Let your word go forth tonight with fire and with power to quicken the very hearts, spirits and minds of your people who need to hear and who to need to know that thou art still God. In the midst of trial, tribulation, thou art still God. We give you all the praise, all the glory that belongs unto you tonight. In Jesus' name, be thou glorified. Amen and amen. Be thou glorified in this broadcast tonight, Lord. So, saints, how's it going? Let me know. Where are you locking in from? How is everybody this evening? Let me know how it's going for you. How's the new year treating everyone? I trust you are blessed. Blessed, blessed, blessed. So we had our umbrella scripture, 1 Peter 5 and 10. But the God of all grace who have called us unto what? His eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After ye have suffered a while, I want you to just put that right there. After you have suffered a while, hmm, he will make you, he will perfect you, he will establish you, he will strengthen you, and he will what? He will settle you. Hallelujah. He will settle you because thou art faithful. Hallelujah. To perform his word. So we come into this time of prayer and fasting and I started to, we've got North Carolina in the house. Nice to see you locked in. I know we've got London in the house. Where else have we got locked in? Let me know. I know we've got Jamaica in the house. Let me know where you are from and where you are locking in from and please share as you join. Right. I thought it was important that we kicked off with, with the prayer and fasting um, because before any time of prayer and fast, it's important to consecrate ourselves before the Lord and prepare our hearts, prepare ourselves a time of evalu self-evaluation and to look at, um, good evening to you, Evelyn Scott from Florida. Nice to see you locked in. It's nice to, to see so many of you coming on. I know people are probably still at work. It's Friday. Um, I'm sorry that we weren't on Tuesday, by the way. Um, I was led by the Lord to not be on the live Tuesday because we were in prayer and fasting. And so here we are and we will resume as normal on Tuesday of next week by his grace. Here, um, I want to look at one of the first uh, scriptures that we kicked off with on week one of the prayer and fasting. And that was Psalms 51. And I love that Psalms. Nordia Dennis, sister, welcome to your happy birthday for yesterday once again. I wanted to kick off with Psalms 51 because Psalms 51 was the first scripture, as I've just said, for our, the beginning of our prayer and fasting. There was something highly um, significant in that time of prayer and fasting. And to kick off with Psalms 51, what better scripture? Here in Psalms 51, we see the um, we see the prayer, we read the prayer, the petition of a broken and a contrite king who was David. The Bible tells us that the Lord loved David. Oh, he loved David. And we know in the scripture that, that you know, that David was a man after what? He was a man after God's own heart. Hallelujah. David was a man after God's own heart. And we see in Psalms 51, the prophet Nathan had come to confront David of his sin. He had come as the face of God almost, sent by God to confront David, to almost have that standoff with David and to confront him of his sin. Because this is where David, just as shortly after David had gone into Bathsheba, who was not his wife, and he had sinned a great sin, had her husband murdered, 
to take this woman for himself. During our time of consecration, it's important that we realize that we should be anyway confessing our sin daily before God. We should be. Oh, Eula Winfrey, God bless you, sis. Much love. Nice to see you locked in. We should be confessing our sin daily before the Lord. Confessing daily because throughout the day, we are always sinning. There's always some element of us being in thought. For some, it's presumptuous. For some, it's unknown. There's always a level of sin. The Bible says we were born into sin, shaped in iniquity. But through Jesus Christ, hallelujah, we have salvation for those who would repent of their sin and seek him and only believe that he is he is the son of God and that he did come for the remission and to redeem us of our sinful state. Hallelujah. We have been redeemed, why? Through the finished work of the cross. The finished work was the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And that does not mean that just because Jesus died on the cross, that we are exempt, exempt of all manner of repentance. We are to repent daily before the almighty God. We are to repent daily before him. Hallelujah. And like David, I think it's fair to say that some of us, some of us at times, some of us, not all, and maybe I could say all at some point in our lives at one time or another, have lacked repentance, lacked true repentance before God. And our hearts have been hardened at times. Hallelujah. Hearts have been hardened. And we say, why? Because we have been stubborn, because we have refused to change, because we have refused to be open to the things of God. We've been stubborn and we haven't wanted to hear from him. But he is requiring so much more from us. We read in the book of Ezekiel 36 and 26. The Lord said, a new heart also will I give unto you and that I will put my spirit in you. And I will take away the very the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh. Who wants God just to give them tonight that heart of flesh? I want him to give me a continual, steady heart of flesh that has no hardness in it, completely sold out for him, sold out for loving our neighbour. Hallelujah. What does that heart of stone look like? Lakeisha Adams, welcome. What does that heart of stone look like? What does it look like? At one time or another, either before we were saved or even some of us in our walk with God, there has been characteristics of a stony heart. And God is saying, what does that look like? We're going to have a little look at that. What does that look like? It's a heart that fails to keep a covenant with God. It fails to keep covenant with him. And it's presumptuous in doing so. A heart that is sodden, soaked, sodden in sin. A heart that is infected with selfishness. A heart that is flooded with, a, with de de generic desires. Desires that are just not of God, but, but flooding that heart. And it plays out in the characteristics of the person. A heart that is filled with such pride. A heart that is filled with boastfulness. Come on, let's be honest. How many of us have had displayed these characteristics? A heart that is drawn towards what? Arrogance. A heart that is disobedient. A heart that is so rebellious that at times we can't even hear from God. An ungrateful heart. A heart that is godless. And like David, there's been times in our lives where some of us have been at that place. 
a hardness of heart to brokenness and honesty before God. When your heart is hardened, you cannot be honest and bold before God. You cannot be open and transparent with him because the hardness of your heart has presented a wall, a wall in the spiritual realm that prevents you from drawing nearer to God. The heart needs to be broken. And contrite heart, the Lord said he would not despise. Many have heard the saying, hmm, God will break your heart to save your heart. And I want to encourage some people today. A heart that is broken is not just broken because of love. A heart that is broken can be broken because it's hard. And because God wants to give you a heart of flesh. And when he replaces that heart with a heart of flesh, then you will truly surrender to him. Hallelujah. We are blessed. We have access through Jesus Christ. And I want to tell someone tonight that there's a covenant of God's mercy. God has a covenant of mercy. And his covenant of mercy, do you know that is stimulated by true brokenness? The covenant of God's mercy is stimulated by brokenness. When you find yourself in a broken place before God, when you cry out to him out of brokenness and brokenness because of sin, that level of sin that has caused you to be like David, so broken before God, it stimulates the mercy that is within his covenant. Hallelujah. God's mercy is stimulated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It stimulates the covenant of his mercy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want to tell someone tonight that when you're broken because of sin like David was, it brings about recognition. When you're broken because of your sin and you know that you have fallen so badly, so badly before God as David had, as we read in Psalms and 51, that level of brokenness, when he was confronted by, the, by Nathan, the prophet, he, he, David fell to his knees, laid out before God, recognizing that he had sinned a great sin before God. And in recognizing his sin, it stimulated the admission of the sin. I want to tell someone tonight, there is a clear difference between recognizing your sin and admitting your sin. Hallelujah. We see that in the text. David Admit he recognized his sin, and when he recognized it, because he had a relationship with God but had gone astray, because he recognized his sin, he was able to admit it. There was nowhere to go after recognizing it, he was broken. If like David, we say that we love God and we're serving him, yet we're walking in presumptuous sin, continuing in the sin, deliberately sinning, presumptuous sin. You know it's wrong, but you're still doing it. You know you shouldn't sleep with that woman, but you're still doing it. You know you shouldn't sleep with that man, but you're still doing it. You know that you shouldn't go and teeth that person and rob from that person, but you're still doing it. You know you shouldn't be backbiting and gossiping and slandering and chatting, but you're still doing it. Presumptuous sin. 
But if you have a relationship with God, if the Holy Spirit is operating on the what on the inside of you, I'm telling you, it will taunt you. It will taunt you. And you will find yourself broken, broken before the Most High God, laid out like David and seeking him in true repentance. And the mercy, the covenant of his mercy will be what? Stimulated. Hallelujah. Good evening to those of you joining. Please do share into your groups and on your timelines as you join. David cried out, blot out my transgressions. Oh God, when we read that, what a powerful, bold crying out. What, it, what does it mean? He says, blot out my transgressions. Oh Lord, when we've got to say to God, blot it out, means blot it out from my thoughts. Blot it out from my dreams. Blot it out from my mind. Blot it out from my heart. Because he was being taunted by his sin. We must reflect daily. We must seek the Holy Spirit daily. If we say we're living for God, we must seek him daily. He will illuminate that which is on the inside, which is displeasing to God. He will illuminate it. Hallelujah. The Bible says that the people of God, they what they perish through lack of knowledge. We are not in biblical times now. We don't need to perish. Oh God, we have the word. David didn't have the Bible. He had Nathan, they had the prophets, but we, we have the word. We have salvation through Jesus Christ, through the finished work at the cross. We have the word. We have the stories. We have the, the truth. The word is truth. It's life to the hearer. Oh, God, have mercy on us. Stimulate your covenant of mercy, oh God. Stimulate the covenant of your mercy. Let our repentance stimulate the covenant of God's mercy. That true repentance, hallelujah. True acknowledgement, recognition and admission of our sins will be laid out before him as we seek him in spirit and in truth, just as we're to worship him in spirit and in truth, so shall we seek him for repentance as we repent. We seek him for forgiveness as we check ourselves daily before him and say, Lord, Wash me and cleanse me in your blood. Good evening, your cousin Janice Bell. Good evening again, Eula Winfrey. Good evening, Sister Ruby Bernard. Welcome as you join. Please share as you join. Tag some people, invite them, let them know the word of God is going forth tonight. When you recognize sin, you know, hmm, when you recognize your sin, it should provoke you to seek repentance. We're seeing so much at the moment in the world. If we say we're serving God and there's no repentance. Good evening, Jacinth Hayward. Blessing, sis. If we say we're serving God, if we say we're reading his word, if I say to you, I'm reading his word, if I say I'm praying to him, what on earth am I reading and who am I praying to if there's no change in my behavior? If there's no change in my behavior, if my attitude stinks, if my behavior stinks, if I'm walking around sinning and deliberately trying to harm and to hurt and to maim, who am I? How can I say that I'm representing God? Good evening to my dear father locked in. 
Fabian Wells locked in on the broadcast. How can I say I'm serving him and my life is dirty? The two do not go together. I'm not, listen, 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 listen to me. I'm not saying that we don't fall short. Let me get this right. Because we've all fallen short of his glory. We've all fallen short. Even when we say we're a believer, we are daily falling short in one area or another. But let me explain to you. There is a difference between saying I'm serving him and I'm seeking him for repentance and there's nothing changing. If your behavior is not changing, if your attitude is not changing, if other people can't see a change on the inside, something is wrong. You must be praying to an idol if nothing's changing, because if the spirit of the living God is in you, there's a powerful shift that must happen. You cannot remain the same and say you've encountered the living God. You cannot remain the same and say you've encountered Jesus. Everything changes when you come into his presence. When you surrender, everything changes. You can never be the same. When you do wrong, and you're repentant like David. David didn't go and say, oh, Bathsheba was on the top of the building, on the roof. Bathsheba just took off her clothes and she stripped off. Oh, she looked so hot. Oh, everything was showing. And Lord, it was her fault. Oh, she just tempted me. Oh, she looked wonderful. She looked, she looked hot, Lord. Oh, and I couldn't resist. David knew that he did wrong. He said in Psalm 51, only against you, Lord, have I sinned. He understood that he had sinned a great sin against the almighty God. He knew who he had sinned against. Only against you, God, have I sinned this great sin. When you're repentant, and acknowledging your sin, there is absolutely no blame. Don't blame it on the devil. Don't blame it on your mom. Don't blame it on your dad. Don't blame it on your spouse. Stop casting blame. You did the sin. Come before God. He wants you laid out. He wants a broken heart. He wants a contrite spirit so that he can come in and make the change on the inside and the Holy Spirit will come in. He said in his word, lift up your head, all ye gates and the King of glory shall come in. Are you ready for the Holy Spirit to come in? That's right, welcome Apostle Pat Williams. Karen Jones, welcome. There is a calling for repentance now. God is calling his people to a place of repentance. The world is in a mess. The church is in a mess. It's a disgrace to think that we know Jesus, to think that we have the Bible, we have the word of the Holy Spirit. What is going on? If we, the church, is in such a mess, God help those in the world. What are they looking to as the example? Who are they looking to? We need to ask ourselves, when the unbeliever looks at me, ask yourself now, where you sit, say, Lord, when the unbeliever, when the unbeliever looks at me, what do they see? Do they see the office chitter chatter box? Do they see the one throwing talk on Facebook and throwing out all kind of nonsense to people and arguing and bickering and carrying on? What do they see? Or do they see the light of the world shining from the inside? 
That's right, Sister Karen, drawn to our own lust and desires, filthy desires that go against the word of God. There is no fear. You'd be surprised some of the things that you see people posting. Good evening, Jennifer Wilson. Bless you. What do they see? Politics. COVID. The things that have been drawn out of, I'm going to say it, so-called believers. Some of the things that have come out of their mouth. I've even seen some people putting up posts with cuss words in. The Bible says, be angry, but do not sin. We need to be checking ourselves, saints. Do not blame others for your behavior. Be accountable. On the day when you stand before the living God, when you stand before Jesus in judgment, he's not going to say, you're not going to say, oh, they made me do it, you know. Oh, they told me to do it. Rubbish. The Bible says, seek out your own salvation. With what? With fear and with what? And with trembling. Ask yourself, are you trembling today? Are you fearful today? When you're getting into bed with that woman, are you fearful? Are you thinking about what God is looking at you and thinking? When you're getting to bed with the man that you're not supposed to, are you listening and thinking what is God thinking? When you're gossiping, slandering, chatting, tearing down people privately, publicly, what is God saying? What is he thinking of you? He loves you, but he hates the sin. He loves you, but he hates the sin. You understand? Glory to God. Like David, listen, we don't just need a spiritual cleansing. We need a moral cleansing. We need a moral cleansing. There has to be something as well as spiritual, okay? But there has to be a moral cleansing when you know that you just know something is wrong. Because you're not stupid. <laughs> There's certain things you know are just wrong. The Holy Spirit doesn't need to explain that to you or to reveal that to you. Where is the moral? We need a moral cleansing. Where is the moral wisdom? Oh, glory. I love that. Where? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Where is the moral I'm writing it down. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Where is the moral wisdom? Spiritual wisdom is one thing, you know, but there should be something that morally you just know it's wrong. Glory to God. Unlike David, we don't need no hyssop. David said that he wants to be purged, cleansed with hyssop. We don't need hyssop to be cleansed because we have what? The blood of Jesus to cleanse us, to wash us, what? Whiter than snow. And we have what? The water of the word. When you're in God's word, listen, we've been praying and we've been fasting this week. Seven days. I know a lot of other ministries, some are doing seven days, some are doing 21. I get it. Fine. But what I'm saying to you is this. What I'm saying to you is this. Good evening, LaFawn Green, darling sister. How are you doing, sis? Nice to see you locked in. What I'm saying to you is this. <clears throat> Understand this. <laughs> when you're in the word, we've been praying and we've been fasting. Some may have done a few days. Some may have done the full seven days. The word, when you read it, should penetrate your soul. There should be something on the inside of you that it draw and you know it's, it make, it brings about a change. There's an activation. There is an activation that goes on on the inside. If that's not happening, you need to get before God. Something is wrong. Good evening to you, Michael Reed. Condolences to you, uh, Minister Michael Reed, once again on the passing of your dear family member. Minister Michael, I didn't catch who it was that passed away, but condolences to you once again. Our dear brother has suffered a bereavement. We continue to pray for you and lift you and your family before the Most High God. God bless you, sir. I want to tell you today that brokenness, right. 
there's a level of broken that's right sis, sister eula they know the difference <laughs> come on sis they know the difference i want to tell you tonight you know what i got thinking about there's a there's brokenness and there's brokenness amen there's a brokenness you know people say oh my heart's broken i was in love and my heart's broken and that happens to many uh, uh, yes it's part of life okay um god will mend your broken heart if you've had a broken heart amen but there's another sort of broken heart that comes with brokenness because of sin. When you're broken because of sin, do you know that it's a different kind of brokenness? When you are broken because of your sinful state on sin you found yourself in, do you know that your, your, your brokenness is just a prelude to your gladness in your salvation. Hmm. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to hear that tonight. Your brokenness is the prelude to your gladness in salvation. Somebody just soak that into your spirit. Out of your brokenness, you will find and repentance, you will find gladness in your salvation because of the finished work of the cross. And when you find gladness in your salvation, then God starts to restore you. Hallelujah. And then you will find joy in his salvation, in your salvation that is available to you. This year, 2021 for our ministry, our word throughout this year, our coverings word for this year is going to be what the Lord gave me. 2021 is the year of recover to discover. It says it just there. As you recover from a state of brokenness, you're going to discover who you really are in God and who he really is to you. Recover to discover discover that's our word for the restored and greatness ministry for 2021 and trust me we're going hard in this word we're going hard in this word this year glory to god so that was day one we fasted and we prayed that the lord would consecrate us and we laid ourselves out before the lord in that consecration, time of consecration. Day two, we fasted and prayed into the area of surrendering to God. The Bible tells us that being crucified with Christ means that we're also resurrected with him into a new life. We prayed and fasted regarding denying ourselves. Denying ourselves. Jesus, as you remember, he said, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Because he understood what was ahead. He understood what was ahead. Jesus understood. But he said, but if it be thy will, oh, let it be. How many of us are holding a cup at the moment? Come on, Holy Spirit. Come on, Holy Spirit. How many of us are holding a cup at the moment? Here's my cup of my glass of water. Yeah. How many of us are holding a cup at the moment? What's in your cup? <laughs> what does your cup represent? What does your cup represent? This is my glass. And I can tell you that my glass, it represents so much at the moment. It's full. <laughs> it's so full. What does your cup represent? What does God have you holding that you need to say to him? or that you've been saying to him, should I say, 
if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. But he's saying to you, oh no, hold your cup. That cup is for you. And then you come to that place as you started to look at the scriptures and you started to look at denying yourself. You started to look at surrendering and just denying you and just, just surrendering more to him. You found yourself saying, Lord, let thy will be done. If I've got to carry this cup, if I've got to carry this cup that represents so much, if it's so full, this cup, I'm going to carry it. That's right. Even Jesus found himself up in his emotions. That's right, cousin Janice. But he knew the benefit of surrendering to the Father's will and saying, let thy will be done. There's so many of us carrying cups at the moment. And we need to start saying to God, this cup is heavy. This cup seems there's a lot. It's full. But Lord, I'm willing to say to you, let thy will be done. And if it's not your will to let this cup pass from me, I'm going to hold it. I'm not just going to hold it low. I'm going to hold it high. I'm going to hold it so high, so high. And when I hold it, I'm going to have my head held high because I know who I am in, a, in you. And I know that when your will is done, I'm going to have a testimony. Somebody say, Lord, let your will be done. Nevertheless, let thy will be done. Hallelujah. Sometimes it's uncomfortable, but let thy will be done. So now we're delving into, welcome to those of you still joining us on the live. Joanne um, Gowans, nice to see you locked in. Sis, uh, Sister Minister Apostle Pat Williams, Eda still locked in. LaFawn Green still locked in. Just give you a quick shout out, those of you that have been joining. And then we're going to get your Bibles, your pens ready. We're going to be looking at 1 Peter 5 and 10, which was the umbrella scripture for us. Eula Winfrey, dearest sister of mine in the Lord, still locked in. Dixon George still locked in. Father Fabian Wells still locked in. Willie Independent, Willie still locked in. Nice to see you. Um, we've still got quite a few of you locked in. Sister Paulette Williams, Minister Michael Reed still locked in. Karen Jones still locked in. Cousin Janice Bell still locked in. Uh, and a few more of you still locked in. Jennifer Wilson, yes, Karen Jones. Andrea Brown in Nice to See locked in. And, and so many of you, Sarah Scott, so many of you still locked in on the live. God bless you. Please do share the broadcast as you join. So our umbrella scripture for, um, for the prayer and fasting was 1 Peter 5 and 10. I, felt, I believe that the Lord laid this scripture on my on my heart for a reason. Do you know how powerful this scripture is? You know, sometimes we, we start, don't we? We start to just read through the word and we read through it and we skim. And there's certain scriptures we get so used to reading the word and we just comb through it. And some of us have got scriptures that are more, I would say more favorable, but more uh, scriptures that we more cleave to because we more know that word or we feel more comfortable or if we're in a, a, a trying situation we'll draw for certain psalms if we have thanksgiving we draw for different psalms or there's certain psalms that we're just comfortable with but what i've started to do in recent uh times is to really explore god's word at a different level it's important that when we come before the word we pick it apart and we ask the Holy Spirit to come in and to absolutely give us not uh, give us a Holy Spirit level of 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 un, way unmerited revelation regarding this word. That's right. We can read without realization or revelation. You're just reading for reading's sake. It's important that you pick up your pen. If you're not understanding, you make notes, you pray in the spirit, asking the spirit of God to reveal to you what it means. 
If I come across a scripture and there's something that I'm not sure of, I'm taking it to God. I'm taking it to the Holy Spirit. I'm saying, explain this to me. And he will explain it to me. He will, he will, I will research it. Then it will start to make sense. He will speak it into my spirit as he directs my spirit. I will have understanding. And I'm so grateful, but we must apply ourselves to the word of God. First Peter 5 and 10, the umbrella scripture, scripture for this week. But the God of all grace, of what? Of all grace, who have called us unto his eternal glory. By who? By Christ Jesus. And the word says, oh, hallelujah, oh, glory to God. After that ye have what? Suffered a while. After you have suffered a while, he will do what? He will make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Come on, someone. Come on, Holy Spirit. Come on. Glory to God. Come on. This word, this word, this word. When you know, you know. Good evening, Dolores Rodriguez. When you know, you know. After that, ye have suffered a while. Listen, hmm. don't get me started because I haven't got into the text yet. Even as believers, we do not deserve the privileges that have been av made available to us through faith in Christ, in the finished work, in him. We are not deserving of any of it. It's a privilege. It's not a right. It's a privilege. We're under grace. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Bible says the wages of sin is what is death. And we have been redeemed from death. Called into his marvelous light. Given an opportunity through grace. Through the redemption of our sins. Through Jesus Christ. We have been redeemed. The wages of sin is death. But for those who are repentant, for those who would come before God in obedience and who will trust him, everlasting life and salvation are available to you. Jesus' crucifixion paid your penalty. For everything that you've done, for everything that you've done, the crucifixion was the penalty. But I'm telling you, if you don't repent, you're going nowhere fast. And if you continue in the sin, you're going nowhere fast. Let me tell you that I'm not coming to play with the word because we're in a time at the moment. I'm telling you. We are in a time at the moment. This is not the time to play with God. This is not the time to play with the word. You see what's going on in the world. This is not the time to play with God. Do not play with your relationship with him. Do not play. If you've been playing in 2020 and hear them playing a bit of knock and tumble with his word, clean up, clean up, clean up. We have been given res a resurrected life, yes, and therefore it is eternal. We with him were crucified. But then, as the Holy Spirit resurrected him from death, so we have been resurrected into a new life. A new life in him. He demands righteousness. He demands holiness. He demands a contrite, a broken spirit, a pure heart. There is a calling. Don't play around. That's right, Sister Eula. Game over. This is not the time to play. You are only here. Because you understand that very fact. I'm telling you that now. 
The finished work at the cross is a true demonstration of God's love for us. The amazing grace that we are under. God has promised to perfect us, to confirm us, to strengthen us and establish us, to establish us is the King James Version, actually. What does that mean? Somebody saying, what does it mean? Sometimes we've got unbelievers on here, but they're saying, what does that mean? And even for believers that are new into the word, what does that mean for you? What does it mean? Let's look at it. Let's break it down, shall we? Get your pens, get your notepads. To perfect us means to complete without blemish. Oh, to perfect is to complete without blemish, without any defect. To be flawless, what does perfect mean? To be exquisite, to be pristine. To strengthen means to be more forceful. When something is strengthened, remember, it didn't say just strength. It was strengthen. It was the adjective. It was to strengthen. Means to be more than it was before. So you will be more forceful and stronger than you were before. You will be more effective because if you are now strengthened, you are now more effective. To confirm. What does confirm mean? It means to verify. If I've got to confirm something at work, I'm verifying it. I'm checking it. I'm validating. God is going to validate you. There's been a number of people who have been wondering, where is God? He is going to confirm you. He is going to validate you. He was going, and what does confirm mean? Confirm means to attest to what is truth. Confirm, attest to truth. Confirmation removes doubt. Confirmation removes doubt. If somebody said to me, what is this? Oh, I think it might be a pen. Is it a pencil? And I was looking from afar. I might say, well, this is a pen. I, I can't see it. Is it a pen? Is it a pencil? Because why I'm looking from afar. But as I get closer, hmm, like you get closer in your walk with God, like you get closer as you start to understand who he is and who you are. Hmm. Hallelujah. As you start to get closer, you start to attest to the truth. Hmm. Because as you get closer, you start to grow in your knowledge. You start to grow in your understanding. As I get closer to this pen, I start to understand what it is because now it's not mystified. There's not a smoke screen. It don't, I don't, I'm not confused anymore. I'm not confused about who I am. I'm not confused about who he is. <clears throat> as you get closer in your walk with God, as you start to see him in spirit and is in truth as you worship him in spirit and in truth hallelujah god bless your sister ashanda angelica prophetess in the house as you get closer to god hallelujah he will stand you start to he starts to confirm some things to you in the spirit hallelujah as he starts to confirm some things to you in the midnight hour when you're in your bed when you're tossing your turn and you can't sleep it's just because he wants to speak to you about some things. It's just because he wants to download some things in the midnight hour to your spirit. Hallelujah. As you draw nearer to him, his confirmation comes to remove every doubt. It's an indisputable fact. Hallelujah. To confirm is to strengthen that which was already or partially established. He wants to establish you. That means he wants to bring something about. He wants to initiate something in you. Behold, I will do a new thing. God is getting ready in 2021 to initiate some things for the true remnant people of God. Those that will stand for holiness. Those that will stand for his truth. Those that are going to serve him at all costs. Those that say, though he slay me, yet I'll trust him. 
Though they slander me, yet I'm going to trust him. Though they want to try and lay a pit for me, dig a pit, yet I'm going to trust him. Though they throw their net and cast it, yet I'm still going to trust him. He is getting ready to initiate the remnant people of God. Get ready, get ready, get ready. He is going to prove what is truth in him to you. He's going to prove his truth and his word to you. Hallelujah. That's what he's going to do for you. He's going to set, you know what really caught me on this word? <laughs> Let me tell you what caught me in this scripture. One of the things that caught me. When it said he's going to settle you. Hmm. That really caught me. You know why? Because you can have all of the others. But you're not settled. He said he's going to settle you. What does settle mean? Come on now. To resolve definitely to settle something it's like if you go to court it's like if you go to a car dealership it's like if you pay off a loan if you go and you're paying off a loan you've settled it you had a loan from the bank 10 grand 20 grand and then you pay it off you have settled it there's no worrying there's no questioning there's no Asking, there's no pondering, there's no wavering. It is settled. And God is saying in his words, I'm going to settle you. I want to be settled. Who wants to be settled? Lord, settle me. Everything about my life, settle me. Settle me. Everything that concerns me, settle me. Who wants to be settled in him? It means to resolve definitely. Resolve conclusively. There's no back and forward. There's no argument. He said, she said, what do I do? What don't I do? You're not a ship without a sail anymore. Wherever the tide blows, wherever it is, you're just an ebb and flow. You're going with the waves up and down. No, 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 no. He is going to place you in his desired state. Glory to God. He's going to, oh, come on, Holy Spirit. He is going to place you in, in, a des, in his desired state for you. Too long you've been going in circles. He is going to place you in his desired state for you. He will settle you. You're going to have a permanent condition because some of us have been wandering for too long. Oh, Lord, we've been like the children of Israel, wandering in the wilderness, round and round and round. Some have been saying, oh, Lord, what's your purpose for me? What do you want me to do? Who do you want me to minister to? What, why am I here? So many questions, so many unanswered questions, so much confusion. The devil is a liar, dirty liar. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Lord, release your people tonight. Release your people tonight. Release your people tonight. The blood of Jesus. Release your people tonight. Hallelujah. No more will you be bound. No more will you wander in the wilderness wondering who you are. What do you mean? You've got the word of God. You've got the Holy Spirit on the inside. And you're asking God, who are you? What is your calling? The devil is a liar. Glory to God. He will settle you. He's going to bring you into a desired state, which is his position what he had for you, his will for you, perfect will, 
before the very foundations of the earth. He will settle you. He's, you've been fluctuating for too long. You've been like a thermostat, some of us. We've been like a thermostat. Oh, it's a bit hot. Oh, it's a bit cold. Oh, it's a bit chilly in here. Oh, oh, oh it's a bit too much fluctuation. Lukewarm approach to your faith. Lukewarm approach to your calling. A lukewarm approach to your testifying. A lukewarm approach when you come before the word. You've been wishy-washy in 2020. Not reading that Bible and opening that word enough. Come on now. And the Lord is saying you've been fluctuating too long. You've been wandering too long. Come back to your first love. Who is God, Jesus, we come to you tonight, hallelujah. We return to our first love, hallelujah. And we pray, oh God, tonight, you're going to, according to your word, First Peter 5 and 10, you will settle us, you will settle us, you will settle us. You desire for us to worship you in spirit and in truth. That's right, you desire, you require our worship, full surrender unto you. No withholding nothing. We're coming into a permanent condition. Too much wandering. Too much fluctuating. It is time to determine your position in God. Determine your position in God. Who will you serve? Because if you're not serving God, you're serving the devil. It's as simple as that. If you're not serving God, you're serving the devil. And if you're serving the devil and you're doing the things that are of the devil, you are not serving God. Make no mistake. Don't be confused about it. You're not a thermostat. You're not con in state of confusion. You have a mind. And he said, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Be ye sober minded, be ye steadfast, be confident in that which is your calling. Be confident in your faith, which you are abounding in, because the Holy Spirit has come upon you and given you power through eternal, through the calling. There is a calling upon your life. There is a calling upon your life. A calling into eternal glory is what he said in his word. He promises to settle us. What a joy. Who's looking forward to being settled? Come on. Who's looking forward to being settled? I'm looking forward to being settled. This is 2021. This is the year of recover to discover and in order to discover who you are in him who he is in you you've got to recover recover your position of worship recover your position of praise recover your position of surrender get on your knees and bow down and say lord here i am here i am lord here i am to worship in spirit and in truth. Holy Spirit of the living God, enter in. Reveal to my spirit that which I need to know. Glory to God. He will settle you. What a joy. And when he settles you, what does it mean for you? Oh, glory to God. When he settles you, you're going to have hope. When he settles you, you're going to have joy. Because what? There's joy in your salvation. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. When he settles you, your destiny is going to become clear. Come on. It's going to become clear. His perfect love when he settles you. The Bible says perfect. He's settling you because of his love for you. 
Oh, glory to God. The Bible says he's perfect love. It casts out all fear. You've been accepted in the beloved. As he settles you, you're going to determine your position in the beloved. You'll be confident of your position in the beloved. Your confidence in Christ is going to reign throughout your whole life. Hope and joy. That's right, mum. Yes, hope and joy. Because in Christ, there is a joy. There's joy in your salvation. Joy cometh in the morning time. Troubles don't last always. Hallelujah. And the Bible says in 1 Peter 5 and 10, and I've come to tell you, you may have suffered a while. You may have suffered a while. I know some of you have been suffering. I had some suffering myself, you know, in this life. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, he who is a covenant making, covenant keeping God, he will settle you. He said in the word, after ye have suffered, understand there is a suffering that may take place. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Remember, after Jesus suffering, after the, oh, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Listen, after the cross, after the cross, after the crucifixion came what? The resurrection. When Jesus was resurrected, he was settled because of the crucifixion and the resurrection and after the resurrection you were settled it was settled and in the same way he is going to settle you after your suffering i'm telling you he's going to settle you he promises to strengthen you and he promises to what? To make you more effective, to establish you and to bring about purpose in your life. Purpose that was set out before the very foundation of the earth. Purpose that was there for you. And I want to tell you that your suffering, your suffering has not been in vain. Your suffering has not been in vain your suffering has not been in vain count it all joy i've learned take it from me i've learned count it all joy the suffering of your betrayal the suffering of deception the suffering of lies the suffering of a broken heart, the suffering of a job loss, the suffering of a home loss, the suffering of a bereavement. I'm giving a shout out to a dear friend of mine, Sister Felicia, whose sister passed away yesterday. The suffering of a bereavement, the suffering of abuse, physical, mental, sexual, religious. If you were a child or an adult, the suffering of abuse and that which we are seeing so much of at the moment in the world. Domestic abuse has become one that is on the radar and the figures are up. I recognise that tonight as part of that which God will settle you from. Slander, haters, jealousy, infidelity, you know how many Christian, just because you're Christian doesn't mean to say you don't suffer. You know how many Christian marriages there's been another child that has been made outside of that covenant of marriage? Christian women who have had a babe, who whose husbands have had babies outside of the marriage. In the relationship, another child has been fathered outside. I come to take the cloak off of that which people don't want to talk about. 
take the cloak off of that which people do not want to talk about. Bishop Roger Kirksey on the live. Welcome, Bishop. Nice to see you locked in. Bishop just celebrated 35 years in ministry. God bless you, man of God. The things that people don't want to talk about, the affair that somebody's spouse had, and you feel broken hearted. They've had an affair. Things that only God can come in and heal you from. That health diagnosis, number of people dealing with COVID at the moment, some dealing with other illnesses, God will settle you. Some dealing with church hurt. You've been in a church and the church should have been a safe haven, so you thought, but you experienced such a hurt there. It's been so painful to recover from. So disappointed that in the house of God, this could have happened to me. God is going to settle you. Hallelujah. God bless you, my beautiful sister, sister Felicia Joseph on the live. We're sending out deepest condolences to you, sis. I appreciate you making the time to be on the live. This darling, beautiful woman of God has suffered a bereavement, a loss of her sister yesterday. I know she won't mind me mentioning. Sis, we love you and we are praying for you. We are here for you and we are holding you up in prayer. Our love and our prayers, Sister Felicia, are with you. We are with you. You are not alone. God loves you best, but we are here loving you too. And we are here for you. When people called you an outcast, ostracized you, God is going to settle you. And I want to tell you that after you have suffered a while, I want to encourage someone. He said a little while. Who got that? He didn't just say after you've just suffered. He said after you've suffered a little while. What does little mean? So we have to break down the scripture. Little means short duration. What does little mean? In short duration. Little means a little time, a season. Actually, I would go as far as to say that little, you could actually say, it's an inconsiderable amount. It's so little, it's inconsiderable. After you've suffered a little while, is what he says. I come to encourage you tonight. I come to stir up your faith. I come to wet the palate of your faith. I come to tantalize your hope. I come to stabilize your thought process as you find yourself in this season that you're facing. I come to tantalize the paintbrush, wet the paintbrush, dip the paintbrush of your faith tonight. And as you start, as you take that paintbrush that's been dipped tonight in this word, you will start to paint. And as you start to paint, you're gonna to start to paint pictures of your deliverance. You're going to start to paint pictures of your healing, pictures of hope, faith, and of your new beginnings in Christ. This is the year of recover to discover. I want to tell someone troubles, they're painful. They are painful. They can be wearing on the soul, mentally, emotionally, on your spirit. But I come to tell you, Trouble don't last always. Joy comes in the morning. And I come to tell you that your morning has come. Your morning has come. So many of you, it seemed like that night of trouble has been so long. So long. But I come to tell you, your morning has come. 2021, the Lord gave me the word. This is the year of recover to discover. You're going to recover some stuff this year, I'm telling you. And as you, when you've recovered some stuff, then you're going to discover some things. They're going hand in hand this year. Troubles don't last always. 
Sister Nodia Dennis is on the line, founder of the Widow's Might. She will tell you Widow's Might was birthed out of her own bereavement. Troubles don't last always and your mourning has come. I want to tell you, start as you mean to go on this year. You know, so many people start off the new year. They start off the year, don't they, with lots of declarations, lots of prayers, lots of I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that this year. And it's all happy, go lucky, and it's all thrown out there. And by February, March, April, you start, if you're not careful, you start to dwindle off. Start as you mean to go on. And if you set yourself from now, I'm telling you, you will continue on in the right way. You will start with Jesus and you and you will continue with Jesus. The enemy will come, but you have what it takes, the shield of faith to quench every fiery dart. Start as you mean to go on and he will be with you every step of the way. Every step of the way. We start with so many declarations. And I want you to write down tonight when you finish the live, if you've got a pen now. My faith is strong right now, but what's my faith going to look like in February, March and April? What's my mindset going to be looking like? What is the core of who I say I am in Christ going to look like? That's right, Sister Janice. Recover to discover that is the word that the Lord gave me for this ministry this year. Recover to discover is powerful. And we will be combing through that as he continues to give us Holy Spirit revelation this year. And he would birth these things in our life. For some of you. Who's seen James Bond? Who's seen James Bond? Who's seen James Bond? In James Bond, when he has a drink, he often has a martini. This is not martini, by the way. Don't get scared. I'm not on here drinking on the live. I may have a Bailey's once in a while, but don't get worried. This is water. <laughs> in a James Bond movie, they say, Mr. Bond, what will you have? What will you be, Mr. Bond? And then he says, martini, shaken and not stirred. Who knows that? Who knows that's what Mr. Bond says? 007, shaken and not stirred. Well, guess what? I wanna tell someone today, your faith has been shaken, but not stirred. <laughs> Hallelujah, glory to God. Your faith has been shaken. It may have been shaken, but not stirred. You know, when you add the two ice cubes and they just, Give it a little knock side to side in the film. Yeah, it's just been shaken a little to let the ice just touch either side. You know, it doesn't want it stirred. It's just been knocked a little side to side. I want to tell someone your faith at the moment is being shaken. But it's not stirred. Hallelujah. It's like the ice cubes rock slightly in the glass but not stirred. You may have been shaken, but not stirred. And you sure have not been poured out. The only pouring out you're going to be doing this year is when you pour out your praise upon he who is the almighty God. That's the pouring out you're going to do. You're going to pour out your praise. Like that song, the alabaster, but I come to pour out my praise on him. I come to pour out my worship on him. I come to pour out everything that I am at the foot of the cross. Because I'm shaken. Because I've been shaken, hallelujah. But I've not been stirred. I was shaken in 2020. Oh, but I was not stirred. I was shaken but not stirred, hallelujah, shaken, but not stirred, somebody's going to soak that in your spirit, oh yes, Mr. Bond said it, shaken, but not stirred, I want you to tell that devil tonight, you know what, I've been shaken, but I'm not stirred, I've been shaken, 
but I'm not stirred. And if you think I'm going to pour out because of anxiety, if you think I'm going to pour out because of depression, if you think I'm going to pour out and fall apart, if you think I'm going to fall pour out and be so empty that I have nothing left on the inside, let me tell you, devil, you best back up. The only pouring out I'm doing this year is I come to pour out my praise. I come to pour out my, my praise and my worship on God. I come to worship at his feet. I come to take every tear. Because let me tell you, you see when the oh, Holy Spirit, come on. When I was shaken, I shed a few tears. Is that okay, someone? When I was shaken, I shed a few tears. But let me tell you what I come to do. I come to take my hair and I come to just wipe my tears, the tears that have fallen on his feet from when I worship him. Yes, yes, Holy Spirit, my tears that fell when I come to worship him, I come to just wipe away my tears. I come to mop up my tears. I pour out my praise on him. I come to pour out my praise at the foot of him. I come to sit at his feet and worship him. I come to get on my knees and worship him. Because he is worthy of all praise and glory. Beside him, there is no other. I have been shaken. And when I was shaken, a few tears fell, but I was not stirred. Shaken, but not stirred. Come on, someone. You're going to remember that for a long while to come. I was shaken. I may be shaken, but I'm not stirred. The Bible says in Psalms 107, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Oh, give thanks. Thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Because today was day seven. Today was day seven of prayer and fasting. Down on my knees morning and night I've been in his word. And he poured, as I poured out, he poured into me. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Who is the redeemed? We are the redeemed. Good evening, Denise Fletcher. We have been redeemed. He has redeemed us from the hand of the enemy. And he gathered us, who? Us, out of the lands. Yes, they wandered in the wilderness, the children of Israel. But the Bible says, that a cloud, a cloud led them by day, a pillar of a cloud led them by day, and by night, a pillar of fire led them. I want to tell you that while you've been shaken, he has been there. He has given you what you need, and his presence has been with you all along. Shaken, but not stirred. Hallelujah. Hungry and thirsty have your soul been when you've been shaken. But he has filled you up. The Bible says they cried out to the Lord. Who cried? We cried. We cried out to the Lord in our trouble. And the Bible says he delivered them out of their distresses. He is your deliverer. He is recovering you that you may discover we are redeemed. This is your exodus from all your trial and tribulation. Shaken and not stirred. Hallelujah. Shaken and not stirred. The Bible says that he led them forth by the what? By the right way. I want to tell someone today, when you are walking with God, when you are serving him, when you're serving him with all your might, he will lead you the right way. You will hear an ear 
a voice in your ear saying, this is the way, walk in it. You will have discernment and you will know what is of him and what is not of him. He will, the Holy Spirit will come to you in the midnight hour and he will speak to you. He will wake you, he will speak to you. And you will know, you'll be in the supermarket and he'll be speaking to you. He'll be speaking to you. He'll be speaking to you. Claudia, welcome sis, nice to see you locked in. The Bible says that he satisfies the longing soul. Glory to God. Oh, that men and women and children, boys and girls would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. The Bible says he's broken the gates of brass and he's cut the bars of iron in sunder. You have been set free. 2021 is your year of recover to discover. Shaken, but not stirred. Yes, hallelujah. He cried out to the Lord and he redeemed them. He saved them out of their distresses. Hallelujah. He is the God who commands and raises the stormy winds. He's the one who lifts up Psalms 107, tells us the waves thereof. Jesus said, peace be still. Peace be still. And you may be shaken, but Jesus is saying tonight to you, peace be still. He commands that storm in your life to be still. He says, peace be still. Hallelujah. He makes every storm calm in your life. The waves will be still. Hallelujah. And he's going to take every area that has been barren. He's going to make it fruitful. Yeah. Some of you have been having a barren. You've been in a barren state for too long. He's going to make your land fruitful. Read between the lines of what I'm saying. I don't mean just crops, crops growing, potatoes and f crops growing. No. No. There's areas of your life that have represented a barren state. They're not moving. Every time you try to do something, it's not moving. It's like you're just locked down. Locked down in the spirit. Everything you try to do, it's not moving. There's too much dry, barren land represented in some areas of your lives. God is saying tonight, I'm going to give you I'm going to make that barren place fruitful. It's going to yield fruit. Yes, it's going to yield fruit. He's going to give you rivers in the wilderness of that barren, dry place. You know, a dry desert ground. You know, if you go to a park on a summer's day and you see the ground and it's so dry to the point it looks like it's starting to crack in certain areas, that, that's dry and barren. He's going to pour out water, rivers onto that. It's going to be, that, that dry ground is going to be so wet, soaked, fertilized, hallelujah. And fruit are going to spring forth. I see a harvest. The Lord is just showing me in the spirit. Is it wheat? Is it wheat? He's showing me wheat. He's showing me wheat. Okay, Lord. He's showing me wheat. He's showing me lots of wheat. He's showing me wheat. Lots of wheat. Tall wheat. Lots of it. Lots of it. Thank you, Lord. Somebody's going to be... Somebody's barren, barren, what's represented barrenness and a dry ground which has not been producing anything. The Lord is showing me wheat in large quantity. That's something that he don't show me. He's showing me wheat. As I look to the left, I saw wheat. Your dry, your dry ground 
is about to be fertilized. Out of your dry ground, what's going to spring forth is because of your obedience. What you're going to see springing up is blessings and reaping, reaping because of your obedience. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I see so much wheat, barley, barley, wheat, tall, so much of it in the spirit. It's just what he's showing me continuously. The Bible says in Psalms 107 and 43, whoso is wise and will observe these things, even they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 1, 3 and 4, Blessed be the God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of what? Of all comfort. I love this next bit because we've just been talking about shaken but not stirred. Suffering for a little while after ye have suffered. Remember the word. And it says in verse 4, Who comforteth us in all our tribulation that we may be able to what? To comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. I want to encourage someone tonight. Stop asking God why you suffered a little while. I know sometimes we want to question him and we want to ask him, count it all joy. There's part of our suffering that we have to go through as believers. Part of our suffering, it's part of the Christian walk. He never said it would be easy. Jesus said, you will have trial and tribulation, but fear not for I have overcome the world. In him, we have the victory, the eternal victory. And sometimes saints, we've got to stop looking at things for the now. We've got to look at things eternal. We serve an eternal God. His word is eternal. So when we think on the things of him, we need to be thinking not just the present, but we need to be thinking eternal. And I think once we change our perception and allow the Holy Spirit to allow us to engage and to embrace that level of revelation and have that level of understanding, we will understand that it's eternal the same way that his word is eternal. He says he's going to do something. doesn't mean to say he's going to do it today. His word is eternal and we There is a shift going on. We need to also be shifting. We need to have our expectation of God. We have a role to play. Faith without works is dead being alone. But we need to understand that he is an eternal God. Some things we're never going to have the answer to. But we have to know that whatever, whatever trial and tribulation we face, that we have found comfort in God. That comfort which is given to us, we are able to what the Bible tells us. We're able to go out to others, <laughs> others that are having trial and troubles. We're able to go out and to minister to them. Like Joseph in the pit in, when he was in the prison, ministering to the cupbearer and the baker. In your state of trouble, what you comfort you found in God, you to pour that out onto someone else. Not just the believers or the backsliders, but the unbelievers. Those who need to know that there is a God who's real. We have a role to play. I feel so blessed. This week, this time of prayer and fasting has been, oh, it's just been phenomenal. God is really speaking to his people at this time and we need to be in position to hear from him and we need to be in position to to receive his word and to understand what he is saying. And um, I just love his word. I, I mean, I'm excited about getting on to his word. Patrick Johnson, welcome to you. Big up yourself, yourself and your lovely wife. And to also DJ um, Prophet as well. And I just love the Lord with all my heart. I want us to meditate on this word that we've looked at today. We looked at consecration, Psalms 51. What it means to truly repent. 
what it means to consecrate ourselves before the Most High, what it means, the, the, the process of repentance, seeking God, seeing where we've gone wrong, acknowledging it, recognizing it, admitting it, repenting through repentance and the broken heart and the brokenness because of sin comes the stimulation of God's mercy. With the stimulation of his mercy comes the stimulation of his grace. In his grace, you then found joy in salvation. Oh my gosh, it stimulates joy and gladness in salvation. In gladness and salvation, God gets the glory. Why? Because in that state of, of, of gladness in salvation, he then becomes, he then starts to restore you. My God, our ministry is called Restored and Walking in Greatness. God is doing some amazing things. He wants to restore you fully. Come to that place of repentance before him. Open up to him and give him your all. Because he promised that after you have suffered a while, he will make you, he will perfect you, he will strengthen you, he will confirm you. And after he's done all of that, he's going to complete it. Why? Because he's going to settle you. Continue to praise God. Continue to worship him. Continue to adore him. Continue to pour out your praise on him daily morning and night meditate on the word sometimes just go and lay on your bed just close your eyes and say lord i'm here and let him speak to you i love you all it's been an absolute pleasure it's been a blessing i'll be continuing to pray for you all as you continue to pray for me and um we will be back by god's grace on tuesday we will be kicking off the first uh, well, it would be the second, but the first official restored and greatness hour. Um, and we're going to be pushing on into our January theme. So look out for the flyer. It's coming out. It'll be out by Sunday. And um, we're going to be really having a fantastic um, topic and theme. We've got some great speak guest speakers coming on in the month of January as well. So look out for the flyers, look out for who's coming on and be blessed. Remember, if you need private uh, prayer requests, please do inbox me, um, direct message me. I'll be happy to pray with you, to speak with you. And um, if there's anything about today's words that you um, require um, some more insight in, you're not sure about something from the word today, do get in contact with me. I'll see how I can help break it down for you more. If I'm not sure of something, I'll pray about it. We'll come back together to find what the Lord is saying further about that particular word. But really, hang on to this word. Do not let this word fall to the ground, but hold on to this word as you continue, as you continue to press on in Christ. Remember, the word for this year, for the Restored and Walking in Greatness ministry, this is our year of recover to discover. And remember, saints, no matter what comes your way, what are you? You are shaken, but you are not stirred. God bless you. I love you. Take care and I will see you by his grace. I will see you on Tuesday, 9 p.m. UK time. God bless you all.